What can we expect from this Judiciary Subcommittee meeting today? Well, expect lawmakers to probe these companies about ways that they might have exploited their dominance to harm competitors. And that's different than what they've been doing in the past few weeks, Brian. In the past few weeks, they've been focusing on, could your dominance have harmed consumers with things like privacy violations, increased prices, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Now they're shifting gears. And one of the reasons they're doing that is it's kind of hard to prove harm on consumers. I mean, most of the apps from the companies they're probing are free. Mm -hmm. And consumers seem to like them. They're not dropping their Facebook or Instagram subscriptions here. So this is really a pivot in strategy from lawmakers on Capitol okay. Hill. So when you talk to all your deep sources, do they use, maybe, in, maybe on the record or off the record, do they use the M word? Do they say monopoly when it comes to Google and Facebook? Sometimes they do. You have big progressive players like Elizabeth Warren who use the M word yes. and say we have to break up these companies. But being a monopoly, by the way, is not de facto illegal. Using a monopoly to push out other competitors or tie products to other things like Microsoft did with Internet Explorer, a subpar browser compared to Netscape, that's illegal. Being a monopoly is not illegal. Exactly right. Being a monopoly does not mean you're anti-competitive. And what Senate Judiciary Committee today is trying to understand is were these companies using their huge dominance to be anti-competitive to smaller players, whether that's a Snapchat or a smaller ad-serving company. And what we know is that members mm -hmm. from the House, the FTC, have been asking small tech companies, do you have dirt? Do you have <laughs> things that we could use but here? Isn't it funny that Snapchat's the only one, that's it, it's the only, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook are all owned, of course, by Facebook. So they all point, look, there's Snapchat, you know, there's, there's competition. There's you know, a few it's kind of others. funny that way. You know, they're leveraging now TikTok as part of their anti-monopoly case. They said that in front of Elizabeth Warren a few weeks ago. So she TikTok kind of laughed is a Chinese off. company owned by the Chinese government, effectively. Yes, that's right. But they still see them as a competitor on the global stage that's for time and attention. So that's an app that they'll point to. They'll say, look, we let TikTok spend a billion dollars with marketing on our platform to grow big and eat our users' time and attention. We aren't causing any sort of anti-competitive harm. Look at TikTok. Okay, well, the American government is probably focused more on American companies and consumers. That said, let's move on. WeWork, Adam Newman, the CEO and chairman, for now anyway, apparently told friends, according to the New York Post, he has the support of most of the board, he thinks. How does this play out? Yes, well, we have new Reuters reporting today saying that maybe he has most of that support, but also maybe he's discussing some new options. So what the board might be thinking is, do we have someone come in, maybe as a CEO and bump Newman to chairman, or maybe we bring in a chairman and keep him at CEO, just to level out the playing field here, bring in someone that's really experienced and someone who's going to keep this company measured throughout. Well, listen, I mean, it's like Travis Kalanick of Uber. I mean, he got forced out and all he did was become a billionaire. That's exactly right. I mean, look. I mean, I'm happy. You can would you be up. forced out for a billion? I mean, I probably I'd, I'd would. I'd be forced out for a billion dollars. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the third story, Netflix. Now, this is not, if you, if you own Netflix, you're not going to like this story, and I apologize. Netflix has been a red-hot stock for years, Sarah. It's wiped out. It was up 45% for the year two months ago. It's wiped out all of those gains. So Netflix is now flat to negative for the year. A lot of streaming, including our parent company, obviously has come out with its own streaming product, or will, called Peacock. What's the word on Netflix? It's an international problem for Netflix. We already know that they were saturated here in the U.S. Netflix's growth opportunity is overseas. And so there's new data that's come out that says their app growth overseas has been slowing. And by the way, Netflix is competing sharp elbows against Amazon and other people dumping money into the region. That's where Netflix's but, stock But Netflix, is as we have talked about, and Laura Martin of Needham, an analyst who's been on the show, has been worried about Netflix stock for a while, and she's been spot on, which is this. They don't have the big cash cow like the iPhone or Amazon Prime or the assets of Comcast. They don't have that. All this they, is what they've got. This is all they've got. And all they've got is the ability to raise prices on consumers. And we saw, by the way, Q2, their earnings took a tumble. Their subscriber growth was much shorter than they had expected. Although a lot of people, Sarah, as you know, blame that on HBO Go and Game of Thrones. So the way we run, we ran a pool on this. The way the uh, uh, Twitter poll, the way it, a lot of people, especially younger folks, they'll cancel and resubscribe every month. Yes, it's cancel culture, 100. I mean, percent It's like okay, I'm going to cancel Netflix this month because I'm going to binge watch Game of Thrones, and then in May, if Stranger Things is back, I will resubscribe. That's a company's. Worst nightmare. Reducing churn is the name of the game. You're exactly right. And we know Stranger Things came back for third quarter, so we're hoping to see gains during this earnings release in October due to Stranger Things. But we'll just have to see whether or not that is a big okay. enough to probe those 
international subscribers. I, I had an idea, and it may not be my own. And if somebody else out there has thought of this, and I'm, you know, I'm not stealing it, I just don't know of it. But I had an idea for Netflix. I don't know if it because why not try to go after the NFL package if you're Netflix? The NFL wants to grow international. Netflix has got more international than anybody else. It would cost them billions and billions and billions of dollars. But if you want to lock people in, there's a reason. Maybe it's some okay. They don't know live. Netflix only knows on demand. The mm. NFL package is a live TV package. And this is the same reason why something like Netflix, they'll go after documentaries, but they don't really know how to do news either. It's a really difficult thing to go from on demand to live. Totally different ballgame. Well,